Okay, so hopefully this video will be able to go through without it freaking out on me. It might be a long video. I apologize for that. Um, we're going to talk about some fucked up shit. It's 3 o'clock in the morning and I just finished watching a documentary and we're going to talk about it. Um, first off, let's show... This is the progress I've made on my first doll that I'm making. It's going to be, um, it's going to be an eye tooth, which is, it's going to be a tooth. And then, um, the top of it is going to have like a cavity with an iris popping out, an eye tooth. So it's going to take quite a bit more work <laughs> working on it. It's not going to be big. It's just going to be like a little hand stress ball or something you can put up on a shelf whatever um so while I was working this I just lost my hook the hook I'm using for this is so tiny and I'm used to using bigger hooks <laughs> here for example this is the hook I'm using for the the other project I've been working on see how big that is compared to compared to this when I first started learning to crochet, I taught myself, and my finger was the hook. So it is getting smaller as I learn. I wanted to make sure that the um, stitches were tight so that the stuffing wouldn't be coming out. Anyways, I just spent the last two hours making this and watching a documentary on Netflix called Girl in the Picture. And um, I'm going to go in reverse order of the documentary. I'm going to tell the story. So if y'all if y'all want to watch the documentary without it being ruined, go ahead and do that and then come back to this. Because I'm going to tell the entire story. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, but I'm going to tell it in reverse order from the order that they told it. Because the documentary starts at the ending and moves its way forward. It's always easier for me to tell a story starting at the beginning. So, I just realized I'm not going to be able to crochet and talk because the light is fucking me up. So, I'm just going to sit here and stare at you like a fucking creepy... Sorry. Um, you know who's fucking creepy? This Delano Floyd guy. So, we're starting with him. I'm just We're just going to call him Floyd because he's had so many names... Um, and, but I believe the last one and the first one was Floyd. So this man is a kidnapper. He's been to prison for abducting children in the past. And he meets up with this woman who has three children. And she is about to lose them to state services, or she already has, and they've given her the option you have to, you know, keep all three of them right now. Or, you know, she, she has options, but she doesn't feel like she has options. And her husband is ju is has just left her because he's just come back from Vietnam and he's all messed up. And he, he doesn't think, is it, it's up to him. He can take the three children, but he has to take all three of them because somebody else is wanting to adopt the three. That's what it is. Sorry, my brain is, it's 3 a.m. A lot of threes going on right now. So... Instead of adopting his own children, essentially, uh, he decides to let them go into um, the system unless the mother can can work things out because the mother had said that there was problems. So somebody at the social services office told the woman to go to church, and uh, and and she would she would find help there. So she went to church and she met Floyd. And Floyd convinced her that he wanted to help her. Um, he married her so that he could legally adopt the children. And then um, he later, I don't know how much later, I, I forget, sent her to the store with a bad check. And she was arrested for cashing the bad check. And while she was in jail... He took off with the three children, who now legally belong to him. He got a divorce from her. He dropped two of the children off at an orphanage, and he took one of them with him. The one he took was a little girl named Suzanne. 
this is where the story gets a little complicated for poor Suzanne. So he steals Suzanne and her mother gets out of prison or jail and finds the other two but isn't able to locate Suzanne and just kind of from from what the show made it seem like just kind of gave up. Um, but she seemed detached from the whole situation, which she probably would have been. Suzanne was kidnapped, I think, in the 60s. Um, it, was, it was a long, long time ago from when this interview was done. So, Floyd has kidnapped Suzanne. He is sexually molesting her. They... He's enrolled her in school. She is his daughter. They, they have no problem existing, seemingly, the way that they are. Um, until she becomes a teenager. Late in her teenage years, he starts sending her out to work as a stripper. And she makes friends with a woman at the strip club named Cheryl. And she invites Cheryl home one night. And Cheryl kind of starts to realize how fucked up it is there at the house because she's going. They're, they're, she's showing her her um, lingerie that her dad buys for her, this really expensive, sexy stuff, which they they were working at a strip club where all of the girls wore this really expensive, sexy. It was a very upscale club, so it wasn't really strange for Suzanne to have these kinds of these kinds of clothing it was strange that it was her father that was buying them for her and later that night uh, Floyd burst in the room with a gun and he threatened Cheryl and he raped Suzanne in front of her and then he just left and Suzanne tried to comfort Cheryl about this she like she told her, it's okay, daddy's like this. I'm okay, you're okay, it's okay. Um, this was just a part of life for her at this point. <clears throat> Cheryl disappeared. Obviously, Floyd had a hand in it. But she wouldn't be found for a few years later. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened to Cheryl. I believe they said that he buried her somewhere after taking a lot of photographs of her um, very badly beaten there in their house. And uh, after murdering Cheryl, he burned the house down and then he took the body and he buried it and I think it was seven years before she was found uh, because somebody was doing an interview with Floyd in the, in the jail and he told them where she was so Suzanne is now with Floyd alone again they're moving from town to town Suzanne's pregnant so, they, they move to another town, and Suzanne has the baby, but he makes her give it up for adoption. And then, somewhere, another baby comes in. I'm guessing it's Suzanne's, but I don't, I, they weren't really clear where Michael came from. At least not that I was paying attention to. So the first one was a little girl and she was adopted out. I believe her name is Megan. She's in the documentary. Um, she knows about her mother and everything. It must be a year or two later they have a, a little boy named Michael. Um, around this time, Suzanne disappears. I think when Michael is about two years old, Suzanne is found dead in a ditch. Uh, they write it off as a hit and run accident. But after looking at her body, they realized that this was not a hit and run. 
that she had been severely abused for a very long time. Meanwhile, Floyd is fighting to keep custody of Michael. Michael's two years old now, and he is being taken away from Floyd while they're doing the investigation because his wife is now dead, and it seems very brutal. Um, Michael is given to a family that loves him and cares about him, but they keep having to give him custody back over for visits, and Michael hates it. Like, the little boy doesn't want to be with Floyd at all. And it's just horrible on all accounts. And Floyd is going to court and saying the child should be with his father and blah, 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 blah. Narcissist bullshit. Finally, they decide to do a DNA test and they find out that Michael is not Floyd's son. So Floyd has no actual right to have custody of Michael. That seals that. Michael is about six years old now, I think. He's in school. Floyd has realized that he's never going to get custody of Michael. Suzanne's dead. And he, he can't be alone, apparently. The man is insane, and he's used to kidnapping people and just forcing them to live with him when they're babies. Um... So he goes to Michael's school, and he, he has a gun, and he goes to the principal, and he tells the principal that he's there to get his son, and that he no longer cares whether he dies. So he no longer cares whether the principal dies either, so that he better listen to him. So he has the principal get Michael. He takes him out in the woods, and, and the, the principal, he takes the principal out into the woods and ties him to a tree. And just leaves him there. And him and Michael take off. Michael's body was never found. They know that he's dead, but he was never found. Floyd, I believe he's still alive in prison. He got the death penalty, but then, like, there was a hold on death penalties, and they're like, nah, we don't kill people anymore. We just tell him we're going to kill him and then let him sit around and wait and wonder. It's much more torturous. Um, so I think that he might still be kicking it, but I might have just, it might just be slipping my mind right now what happened to him. But yeah, that is essentially the story of Suzanne and Michael and Floyd and the girl in the picture. Um, sorry this was a bit rambly and all over the place. It's, like I said, I started filming this at 3 a.m. And I had just finished watching it and I wanted to, I just wanted to talk about it. Because this was a story that I had known, but it was, it, there are so many parts to it that I had, I had not known. Like, I, I had heard a story about this girl, um, just that she had been kidnapped and that she was living as her father, daughter, husband, wife situation. But I didn't know about the two children or about the friend who vanished and was also murdered by Floyd or about the children before her, you know. So it was it was a it was really good. It's a good documentary. I I do suggest it to anybody who enjoys true crime stuff, really fucked up shit. Um There's another one I downloaded that I was going to watch recently and I'm trying to now remember what it is. Uh I think it's called Captive Audience and it's about the um Steven Stainer case. They're probably going to talk a little bit about Car Carrie Stainer as well, because nobody ever really talks about Steven Stainer without talking about Carrie Stainer. But that's a completely different fucked up situation for another 3 a.m.